Sunday, everyone, and welcome to Grace Church of All Nations. I'm Sister Sagittarius, and we're so glad that you're joining us today. every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursdays. You can also join us Tuesdays and Fridays on Grace Zoom for Bible study and prayer. Grace Church of All Nations. I'm Sister Sagittarius, and we're so glad that you're joining us today. Monday, Wednesday, and Thursdays. You can also join us Tuesdays and Fridays on Great Zoom for Bible study and prayer. So you know what that means. It's communion time. We invite you to participate as we honor our Lord and Savior. All you need is some crackers and some bread or some juice. We're so excited to have you here with us today.
Also, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and our Instagram pages. Now let's get ready for service. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Father, we come to glorify you this morning, and we come to give your name praise. Father, we are grateful to be in the land of the living. And God, we thank you because this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Father, this morning, we come to say thank you. We come to honor you, God. Father, we come with our arms and our our eyes to you oh God father this morning we thank you for the life that you've given us we thank you for providing for us we thank you oh God for our children we thank you oh God for our families hallelujah and God we thank you even for those that are home watching God and waiting God hallelujah God we thank you this morning as we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and we enter into your courts with praise God we humbly submit ourselves to you Lord and father like you said in your word let your will be done in our lives God this morning oh God we pray your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven father we pray for those that don't have your will this morning that they will take of your word and learn of you oh God father we need you like never before oh God for such a time as this God we thank you hallelujah that you have come to give us life and life more abundantly God those that are at home struggling this morning oh God God we thank you for the word that will come directly to them oh God father you said in your word if I be lifted up in the earth I will draw all men unto me and God we thank you this morning we thank you for this house God we thank you for this house God the household of faith oh God we thank you this morning for the man of God we thank you this morning for the woman of God and we ask that you will bless him oh God like never before God we commit this service unto your hands oh God and we thank you Holy Spirit that you are 
we give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Begin to stand on your feet and open your mouth and bless the King of Kings. He deserves your praise on this morning. You have woken up. You have food on your table. You have a home to live in. Somebody bless the name of Jesus. Somebody bless the name of Jesus. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Open the eyes. I want to see you. I want to see you. Come on. Open the eyes. We honor you, Lord. We want to see you. We want to see you. To see you high. High and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we see. Anybody want to see him? I want to see you. One more time. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high lifted up. Shine. speak well of them if you want to see them all you have to do is talk to them God we love you God we adore you God we lift you Lord we magnify you we give you the honor we give you the glory we give your name the praise there's no one greater than you Lord there's no one stronger than you are we ask for your presence on this morning God we ask that you comfort us in this time we ask that you heal our bodies. We ask that you touch our hearts, God. We ask that you bless our minds, God. Bless our families. We just want to be in your presence, oh Lord. We just want to be in your presence, oh Lord. We just want to be in your presence. Come on. He's, his presence is here. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless you, God. Come on, open your mouth and speak well of them. One. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We magnify you, God. Oh, we thank you for your presence on this morning, God. 
There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. You're all in compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of love where my heart becomes free and the shame is under your presence Lord we cry
Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Here's my worship. All of my worship. Receive my worship. All of my worship. Here's my worship. Lift up your worship. Lift up your worship. Lift up your worship. Lift up your worship. Come on. He's been too good not to give him what he deserves. He's been too kind to not give him what he deserves. He's been Jehovah Chira. He's provided. He's provided. He's provided. in unity with my brothers and sisters. Doesn't matter if you're not here. We know that you're watching. We thank God for what unites us in worship. All of you watching at home. All of you listening on the radio. I thank God for each one of you. Welcome this to this Sunday morning communion service. It's good to have you here with us. Oh my God. Thank you, Brother Torrance, for leading us in worship this morning. I just wanted to share with you a couple of things. Um, the Children's Church, all of the Children's Church members, please stay tuned. We want to um, share some news with you later on this week. So we'll be doing it either on Facebook or um, on text blast okay um, Reverend Clovis would like for us to share participate in the angel tree COVID style this year and also stay tuned for information on how we can do that we love to participate this narrative in this chapter of Jesus and the Samaritan woman at Jacob's well Our narrative, our text today, comes at the end of this powerful narrative of the woman at the well. And our narrative has only nine verses in its story compared to the previous narrative that uses 38 verses to convey the story to us. Here in our text, we read that a man, a nobleman, a man of wealth, they had a son who is sick and at the point of death. We're not privy to any more information about this man or his son or his family. We do not know if this son is his only son, nor are we given his or the father's name. We're told only that a father is concerned about his son who is about to die from an unnamed sickness. We can, however, determine with some degree of certainty that this nobleman had exhausted all of the medical resources that were available to him and found that there was no human help left to help him. Our narrative opens with this these words in verse 47 when he heard 
when he heard. At this point, it is prudent for us to surmise that this man had heard about Jesus. He might even have witnessed some of the miracles performed by him. For chapter 2 of this book, verse 26 tells us that Jesus performed many miracles during the Passover feast in Jerusalem. And verse 45 tells us that Jesus was well received by the Galileans, his fellow countrymen, because of the miracles that he had performed at the feast in Jerusalem. But when he heard, now please note if you will that this nobleman was probably a Roman. We're not sure of this, but at any rate, if he were not, he was according to the NIV, an official of the Roman government. Most probably he was not a Jew, but when he heard that Jesus had come his way, come and made his way back home, from Judah when he heard that Jesus had come through Samaria and had made his way back home to Galilee and was now in Cana of Galilee where he performed his first miracle the Bible tells us that he made his way from Capernaum from Capernaum to Cana in faith in the ability of Jesus to do what no other power could do there's an old gospel song that asks this question. I'm sure Bishop Hunter knows this song. Have you any rivers that seem impossible? Have you any mountains that you cannot tunnel through? God specializes in things impossible. And he will do what no other power can do. This man, who most probably was not a man of faith, came to Jesus in faith because he heard. He was not a Pharisee. He was not a priest. He was not a man of faith. But he came to Jesus in faith. The Bible tells us in Romans 10 and 17 that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. I like the way the NIV puts it. It says, consequently, faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the Word about Jesus Christ. This man heard and when he heard, this man came in faith in the Word that he heard about Jesus Christ. He had no cultural dealings with Jesus or even the faith of Jesus. But he came as a result of the word that he heard about Jesus Christ. Listen to this. As a boy and a young man, I witnessed the Lord performing miracles through my father who had the gift of healing. And it seems that my sister and his team receive that gift also. The Lord performs healing through my ministry, but not at the rate that he performed the healings through my father. He had the gift of healing. And what was so profound about those miracles that God performed through my dad was that these healings, these miracles were bestowed upon people who were not necessarily people of faith, but people who came to Jesus in faith. It wasn't so much the people who believed in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and were serving Him. They were people of faith, but it were people who had heard about Jesus and His miracle working power. They came to Jesus in faith. Sometimes I wondered why some of the saints weren't being healed. I wondered why was it that some of these folks, sinners from the streets, came into a service, a healing service, and they were miraculously healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. But they came in faith. 
they heard about what Jesus was doing. They heard about the miracle working power of Jesus Christ. And based on what they heard, they came in faith. They did not have any doctrines that precluded their faith. They had nothing that was covering what they had heard concerning what Jesus was doing. They had no, they didn't know nothing about Calvinism, about Armenianism. They didn't know anything about Methodism or Holinessism. All they knew was the fact that they heard about what Jesus was doing and they came in faith. See, before Jesus healed folk, he did not require that they be people of faith, but rather that they had faith in his ability to do what they needed him to do. And I wish somebody would shout hallelujah. <laughs> Thus in this text, in our text, number one, we see that this man came to Jesus. Rather, this man heard about Jesus. He heard about what he was doing. And number two, he did not leave it there. A lot of folks hear about Jesus, but they don't take the next step. He came to Jesus. Some of you old-time Pentecostals and holiness folk and Baptists would remember this verse of a hymn. I came to Jesus as I was. Wearied, worn, and sad, I found in him a resting place. And he has made me glad. He heard about Jesus and he didn't leave it there. He made another step and he came to Jesus just like he was. Did not come with any pretense. Did not come with eloquence of speech. He came just like he was. He came to Jesus in faith. Now, now, it is important to note that after this man heard, he did not tarry. There was a no inner struggle regarding what he should or should not do. This same verse declares that he went to him. He went up to him immediately. And then number three, he asked him for what he wanted. And Jesus' immediate response in, ver in, in this verse, verse uh, 47, look at his immediate response. He says, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will never believe. I don't know why Jesus answered him in that way. But he said, after the man asked him, Lord, my son is dying. Come and heal him. We don't know why Jesus responded that way. It might have been that Jesus was testing his resolve, his tenacity. And his, his persistence. But number four, this man did not let that stop him. He did not get an attitude. So why is this man asking me this question? Why is he state, making this statement? This man was determined. He was determined with a Jacobian determination. You know what a Jacobian determination is? He had determined a determination like Jacob. He would not let go until the Lord did what he knew that the Lord could do. I wish somebody could turn to somebody and say, we need a Jacobian determination. We need to be like Jacob. Hold on and don't let go until God does what he's able to do. I believe that Jesus wanted to know if this man was coming to him out of speculation or out of expectation. Many people come to Jesus out of speculation. They're not quite sure. They don't come out of expectation. But I don't know about you, but whenever I come to the Lord, I don't come speculating that what God, of what God might do. I come expecting him to do exactly what it is that I need him to do. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. came knowing that God was going to do what he needed him to do. This man would not give up. Tell somebody, don't give up. His response to Jesus was, Lord, I have come up to you. Come to me. Come down and go with me to Capernaum. 
for my son is at death's door. I believe hidden in this narrative is a, an allegory that many of us have missed. This is, a principle, this is another principle, principle five. You see, this nobleman came up to Jesus first before he asked him to come down to him. One of the revelations that I received in this narrative is that we must sometimes leave the issue where it is and go up to Jesus. Let go of the issue and go up to him before he will come down to us. Too often we're always telling the Lord, Lord, come down and bless me. Come down and heal me. Come down and deliver. Come down and make a way out of no way. Come down, come down, come down. But this man went up to Jesus. He went up to him. He went where Jesus was and beseeched him. Some of us think we know so much about the Lord that no longer do we <laughs> do we go to him and ascend to where he is to ask of him what it is we need it's always Lord come down to me we're always beseeching him to come down but have stopped going up to him and then Jesus immediately responds to this request in verse 50 and tells him to go back home your son is healed. Go back home. Your son lives. And the Bible says the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him. And he went his way. And I like the way the NIV says. He says the man took him at his word. Yes, the man wanted him to come down and go back to Capernaum with him. But Jesus said, no. Go back home. Your son lives. Your son is healed. And the man did not question him. He took him at his word. He didn't see anything. He didn't feel anything. No one assured him of anything. He just took Jesus at his word. He didn't ask for a sign. He took Jesus at his word. He did not ask for immediate confirmation. He took Jesus at his word. The old hymn writer said, Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word. Just to rest upon his promise. Just to know thus saith the Lord. Just to take him at his word. I wonder if there's someone in this room and someone who's listening on the radio or someone who is watching on live stream. Have you stopped to take the Lord at his word or are you just looking around to see if God is going to do what he said he's going to do? I don't know about you, but I take God at his word. It does not matter if I see the manifestation on the day or on tomorrow. If God said it, I believe it and that settles it. I take God at his word and I will shout hallelujah even though I can still feel the pain. I'll shout hallelujah even though I can still see the circumstances because I take God at his word. He is a God that he cannot lie. I will not ask for him to show me a, a sign or wonder. I take God at his word and somebody ought to start taking God at his word. When you take God at his word, when you go back down to the situation, you'll find a miracle has happened there. This man came to Jesus in faith. Faith in what he could do. He did not know that he would, but he was certain that he could. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. He was somewhat like the man whose son was an epileptic. The man who brought his son to his disciples and they could not heal him. And when Jesus came on the scene and said to him, if you believe all things are possible, if you just believe all things are possible. And the man responded, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. I like the way the NIV puts it. It says, help me overcome my unbelief. Help me to overcome. Lord, I believe, but help me to overcome my unbelief. He was at that place where many men and women of faith are we believe that God can 
We believe that God is able. But we don't believe all the time that God will. That is the unbelief that this man was talking about. Lord, I know that you can. I know that you're able because I would not have brought my son to you if I did not know that you weren't, weren't able, were able. I know that you can. I know that you can. But I'm not sure that you will. It is not only about believing that God can. We need to get a, to a place in our faith where we just believe that God will. In this world of humanism, intellectualism, and empiricism, even men and women of faith are leaning on their own understanding shivering looking at what's going on in the world believing the pundits believing all of the folks the spinners that are telling you what is going to happen and what's about to happen making their predictions leaning on our own understanding you see people of faith believe without a shadow of a doubt that God is and that God can But right now, the sin seem to be falling short of the fact that God will. We are established in our theology of God, but find ourselves being pulled more and more into the vortex of unbelief and God's willingness to do what we know He can do. Thus, I leave you today with this, that in times like this, we need to go back to the fundamentals of our personal faith in Jesus Christ. Not what our denomination teaches or what we say with our lips, but a fundamental faith that causes us to go up to him and stand on his word and ask for what we know that he is able to do and hold him to it. Ha. God, I know that you're able and I'm going to take on a Jacobian spirit. I'm going to hold you to your word. I'm going to be persistent no matter what it takes. I'm going to hold out. I'm going to wait until my change comes. I'm not going to let the things of this world cause me to doubt what you can do. I'm going to stand on your word. Because I heard your word and when I heard your word, I believed in what you can do. And I'm not going to let all of my religiosity, all of the things that I have been taught in my theology and in my denomination cause me to doubt. Because sometimes folks in their desire to cause you to have more of an intellectual understanding of God has caused your faith to decrease because you're always comparing. You're always trying to prove something. But my friends, the only thing that we have to prove is that we still stand on the faith in what God can do and what God will do. I'm tired of this world hallelujah putting God on the seven same level the same level as this world God is who he is and God is able and not only is he able God will if we hold on thank you Jesus the Lord said that there's some healing that needs to happen in you and in your family, in your lives, and folks that you know around you. But we don't have that persistence and that determination as did this man in our text. This man, even though what Jesus said, how Jesus responded to him, could have angered him, but he didn't let that bother him. He said, Lord... If you don't come down with me, my son's going to die. So I'm going to stand here until I get an answer. I'm going to stand here until you work a miracle. I'm going to stand right here. I'm not going to budge until you move in my direction. Until you create a miracle in my life. Lord, I'm going to stand. I heard your word. I believed your word. Folks were talking about what you've done. And I'm going to stand on it. I'm going to claim my miracle right now. And no devil in hell is going to take away the faith that I have 
in you to be able to do exactly what you said you were going to do. So therefore, Satan, don't you dare try to cause me to lose my faith. I am going to stand on it. And Satan, I'll tell you kingdom down right now because you are not going to cause me to lose my blessing. I'm going to receive my miracle. When he heard, when he heard, when he heard, he came to Jesus. And when he came to Jesus, he asked him exactly for what he wanted. Thank you, Lord. And he was determined, even as it seemed as though the Lord wasn't going to answer his prayer. Lord, I don't come up to you. Now you come down with me and heal my son and I'm going to hold on to you I'm going to hold you at your word I'm not going to speculate I anticipate that you're going to do exactly what you said you're going to do oh blessed be the name of God hallelujah can somebody just lift your hands up to the Lord and say Lord I believe you I believe your word. Everything you said in your word, I believe. I stand on your word. I speak your word. And I believe your word. It is done in my life. Every miracle that I need, every blessing that I need is done. And I'm going to hold you to it until I see the manifestation thereof. And while I'm holding you to it, I'm going to praise you and give you glory. Because I know that you inhabit the praises of your people. You said you were going to heal me. I'm going to hold you to it. You said you were going to deliver my family. I'm going to hold it to you. Hold you to it. You said you were going to save my children. I'm going to hold you to it. When he heard, now listen to this. I just love that last part. When it says he believed his word and he took him at his word. And, and here's the thing. When the man got back home and his servants met him on the way home and said, your son's fever has broken. It says the man and his household believed that very minute. In other words, they became followers of Christ there. They became people of faith. Then they were people who believed in what God could do. Now they were walking in what Christ has already done and they became men and women of faith oh I thank God that God is not like us God is sovereign and he will do what he wants to do when he wants to do it and how he wants to do it I challenge some folks to have some radical faith in God today. Stop worrying about the things of this world. Have faith in God. And just know that God is going to do exactly what He said that He would do. Father God, in Jesus' name, I thank You for Your Word. I thank You, Lord God. For the move of the Spirit in this room. Lord, increase our faith, I pray. Even as we get more into your word and learn more about Jesus Christ, cause our faith to increase. In Jesus' name, amen.
God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. People of God, what do we believe? We believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into Hades. The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. My faith looks up to thee Thy land of Calvary, Savior divine, now hear me while I pray, take all my sins away, oh, let me from this day be holy. You may be seated. Let us pray. Merciful Father. We, your children, assemble in your name and in your house to break bread and drink of the cup in memory of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant, O oh God, that we may have understanding and humility as we seek to reenact our Lord's Last Supper. Hear us, O oh God, as each of us in our own way seek personal communion with thee through Christ our Lord. O oh God, our Father, who has been made known to us in Christ. We pray that we may feel your presence here this morning and that your spirit and way of life may be real to us. We thank you, O oh God, for these emblems of our Lord's broken body and shed blood which remind us that he gave his life, that we may see in him your love for us. Help us, O oh God, to know that in your love we have grace and mercy through which all our repentant sins are forgiven and by which our lives may be transformed with newness. We come before thee, O God, remembering that even as thou dost love and forgive us, so ought we to love and forgive one another, strengthening our faith, faith in Christ, and help us to be consecrated to his way. O God, who canst guide our feet into the sanctuary of thy presence, Make ready, we beseech thee, our hearts to receive that sacrament of that love whereby thy Son hath redeemed us. World without end. Amen. Our prayer of forgiveness. Almighty God, we thy sons and daughters of thy grace humbly bow before thee. We thank thee, O merciful Father, that by thy grace and mercy we have been made worthy to eat of thy body and drink of thy shed blood. Forgive us, we pray, our transgressions, our faults, and our weaknesses. Create in us a clean heart and a right spirit that we may do thy divine will. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Give me a clean So I may serve Thee. Lord, fix my heart 
so that I may be used by Thee. For I'm not worthy of all these blessings. Give me a clean heart and I'll follow thee. People of God, when you take the bread in your hand, remind yourself of him whose body was broken and do not shun the suffering which still tortures the world by sin or the sacrifice that is demanded for its healing. When you lift the cup to your lips, see the greatness of his spirit that was pure and committed, meek and lowly. Let us hide not the poverty of the souls of men. Let us not desecrate this moment with shallowness, but in these emblems, let us meet the living Christ, for he was wounded for me. Wounded for me. Wounded for me. There on the cross, he was wounded for me. Gone my transgressions, and now I am free. All because Jesus was wounded for me. Dying for me. Dying for me. There on the cross. He was dying for me. Now in his death my redemption I see. All because Jesus was dying for me. He's risen, risen for me. Risen for me. There on the cross, He is risen for me. From death's sting, I am free. All because Jesus was risen. On the night that our Lord was betrayed, he took bread. And after he had given thanks, Lord, we thank you for this bread and for what it represents, the body of Christ that was broken for us. Thank you, Lord God, for the healing that is in the body of Jesus Christ. We pray your blessing upon this bread that those of us who shall give and those who, are, who shall receive will be worthy through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. He broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body that was broken for you. And after the same manner, he took the cup. And after he had given thanks, Lord God, we thank you for this cup. And we thank you for what it represents, the blood of Jesus Christ that our Lord shared on Calvary's cross. 
the blood of Jesus that cleanses us of our sins, the blood of Jesus that has given us victory. We overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. We pray that those of us who shall give and those who shall receive will be worthy through Christ our Lord. Amen. He took that cup, gave it to his disciples, and said, take drink. This is my blood that was poured out for many. People of God, I'm going to ask that you uh, please come and receive your communion at this time and go back to your seats and we, wish, we shall eat and drink together. Pray together on our knees. This come from all over. Let us pray bread together on our knees when I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun oh Back to the left.
the body of Christ. as we eat together. The blood of Jesus, let us drink together. That Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will Come on, sing it with me. It reaches, it reaches. It reaches to the highest mountain. And it flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives me strength. Bless you, people of God. We have worshiped together in song and praise. We worship together in hearing the word of God. We worship together in holy communion. Oh, what a power packed service this is! Hallelujah! I wonder if you can just give God the praise in this room and those of you who are listening and those who are watching, give God the praise. The blood of Jesus will never lose its power. I invite you to give unto the Lord as he's given unto us in this act of worship and our tithes and our offerings. Those of you at home, wherever you are listening, watching won't you give unto the Lord as he's given unto you and your tithes and your offerings let us worship God in our giving those of you who may not have given before there will be shown on the screen how you can give unto the Lord here at Grace Church Let's give unto the Lord as he has given unto us in our tithes and our offerings. And it flows to the Lord. Don't forget to vote on this coming Tuesday. Vote for the right person. And if you don't know who the right person is, call me up later and I'll tell you. No, let the Lord speak to you who the right person is. Amen. God bless you on today. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest, rule, and abide with you and me, now, henceforth, and forevermore. May the joy of the Lord, which is our strength, be rich and full in you and me. May that joy flow from us and touch those with whom we shall come in contact with. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, before we, before we go off, our condolences go out to the family of Sister Sheila Singleton, who's gone on to be with the Lord. For the Christian... 
it's a condolence because we have lost someone here on earth but it's rejoicing because that person is in heaven with the Lord we will miss her dearly but praise God she is where the Lord intends for her to be right now with him in glory but our prayers go out to Deacon Singleton and the Singleton family at this hour the services will be on this coming Friday and we will live stream the service at 1030 God bless you and go with God people of God thank you so much for attending on today I don't know when the next time we will invite so many to come out uh, again it's based on how 